Hello, this is Soaring Moon with a bit of a longer video for you today. Uh, this is the fourth devlog video in a series of devlog videos about my video game that I'm making. It has a title now called Kijimin Windborn Kin. So that's what I'm going to be going on with here into the future. I've done a lot of work over the last couple weeks for this game. And I'd like to go over with that with y'all <laughs> and uh, just get into it. I have uh, the first page of character creation here, which is choosing a background. The player can choose up to t a one of ten backgrounds. Uh, each of them has a, an effect on gameplay um, and on character creation. So I'm going to choose things that affect the character creation process so you can see uh, that there are you know, ongoing effects. Uh, one good one here is um, gaining one disadvantage and rerolling a Kijim in an additional time. So I'm going to go ahead and select that option and confirm it. The player then chooses a home city of one of Kijimin's 20 nations Argentus, Argonon, Chroma, Cupracau. De Nova, Fraction, Geminia, Irides, Lifalsen, Lumine, Lasteria, Opal Ran, Pocoto, Prismer, Radef, Skylin, Sorcilius, Spectrobia, Right Rain, and Unborn. And you'll see that each of these home cities has uh, affects both the starting location, provides bonuses to the character, and here, when dropping off passengers, you can trade them out with mercenaries and unborn cities at no cost. Uh, these descriptions will give you some clues as to how the game will be played. Uh, if you read these, um, I'm going to choose Skyline here because it has the biggest effect on character creation. So I'm going to select this so we can see that impact. Now I can choose one, one, one of 20 different professions. Professions also have a big uh, effect on of the game occasionally. Uh, gain one renown. Uh, choose one additional large equipment. You can trade any item in any city. I'm going to go with uh, Arrow Right, which makes ships purchased during character creation a little cheaper. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. So here we have a list of advantages. I'm going to take Argentian Supporter. Gain the effect of fabulous wealth while in Argentus or Silius or Unborn Cities. Um, makes, you can't select the Geminian supporter advantage and you have to select Geminia as an ally. Or, or, or uh, sorry, you cannot select Geminian supporter as an advantage, select Geminia as an ally, or select Argentus as an enemy. And so the second I select this, this becomes locked. And if I deselect it, it becomes unlocked. So so that you can't do these. You also can't do the vice versa either. So, so like this, and I'm gonna take flying Kijimin mount so we can see that effect later on. Here under disadvantages, see here that I have um, alcoholic. Um, instead of gaining one morale when drinking al alcohol, you lose it. Here, uh, healing provided by white Jimin is negated, so any place uh, in a city that would normally be a healer, uh, you can't use them because they typically use white gemin to heal you. So you'd have to find a cultist in order to heal you. So we'll take that one, sure. And uh, you normally start with two disadvantages, but uh, we get three here because uh, of my background. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose a couple more see if we can get one more that affects character creation. Let's see here. Um, start with negative five. Support authority. Use small equipment, something happens. Um, let's see here. Cannot gain companions. So I'll go ahead and select that one. And here we have cause, so 
Uh, these are just broadly affect events when they come up. Uh, the events will be randomly generated based on location and various other factors. But I'm going to choose Aura CF because it's my favorite. Continue. Uh, you'll see that I can no, no longer select con companions. You normally have two. And you can select uh, Kijiman uh, Familiar as your companion. But I have no companion options. There are 19 uh, characters, each with their own special um, backgrounds and what they do. Uh, this guy cooks. says, excellent cook. You can make a good meal out of the barest of galley cabinets. This guy down here is a large man with a caring heart uh, who's a highly religious Danist who sees it as moral duty, duty to cure mental and physical sickness. So I'm just going to confirm without any selections because I can't make any. Here we can choose our allies. The Argentian supporter advantage has locked Geminia as an option. But I can choose Argentus, so we're an Argentian supporter, might as well choose Argentus as an ally. So go ahead and go ahead and do that. And um, Geminia is already our our uh, our enemy faction is its greatest ally, so we're going to go ahead and choose them as an enemy as well. So we have transports. We have um, our starting city has locked four of our transport options, but we have four renown. Now, normally the ships would cost five renown to purchase, but uh, the option we took for, I can't remember now, um, has reduced the cost by one renown. So we're just going to uh, buy the most expensive ship. Why not buy one? We can afford it. Um, we can also buy two smaller ships if we wanted to do that but I'm um, just gonna buy one of these. And you'll see that has a, you know, all, all selections have a nice rainbow outline to them. And uh, if you can select more than one, there'll be a rainbow flashing number. Uh, we can also get one of these for free because they cost zero renown. So we'll go ahead and buy one of those. And there's a limit one on those, so confirm. So we get small equipments. I think I'm gonna get uh, a ballista some ballista bolts, a flintlock pistol, some bullets for that flintlock pistol, the gunpowder for the flintlock pistol, and the um, and some uh, food. Uh, Cotonese, since I'm alone, I can afford this getting this for myself. Otherwise, I can get some poco palm, which you get more food out of that at cost of morale. But we're going to go ahead and choose Cotonese, confirm. Get large equipment. Makes sense here to choose cannons, cannonballs, since I already have gunpowder, confirm. And then we get to choose our artifact. So artifacts have a wide uh, range of effects and have very important, um, powerful effects that affect gameplay. For example, when rolling a d20 when encountering any event, if you roll a 19 or 20, you can choose the resulting outcome of that event, either positive or negative so that the player will be able to uh, choose whether they get in combat or negotiate or whatever. And then Flaro is an in, in infinite ammo um, bolt, so that's useful for said crossbow. Uh, this uh, repels attacks uh, against, against ships. Uh, this is an infinite ammo repulsor. It's pretty cool. So we have a lot of effects here. I'm just going to select uh, Argo Steel. Move on. So here I have a flying um, a flying mount, it's damage resistant, and we have the flying mount uh, advantage uh, coming into play here. It affects the first slot in the uh, gym and pool. So there's a procedurally generated uh, text that comes in every time a gym is rolled. So every gym has a procedurally generated a paragraph description about it. So uh, here, um, I don't uh, really, we'll, we'll go through, we'll make some decisions. Um, grade two magenta respectful crystalline. Magenta aspect gemin dissolve and destroy the objects around them. 
It can create a miasmic cloud, decay objects and creatures, or assist in poison, uh, resisting poisonous, toxic, or corrosive effects. Respectful key gemmen appear as their basic description uh, as a synthetic form, doing what they can to follow orders within their chain of command. The crystalline synthetic form is extremely hard and pervious to most physical damage. It ignores hits taken uh, by it that are not vital wounds. See down here, this one is a, a wise micro golem. So, and uh, here we have a loving ab abstract geometry. Uh, so, this is interesting. Uh, purple aspect Jimin interact with the spiritual plane of Anu. They allow their wielders to step into that plane, put enemies to sleep, or resist Jimin radiation. Loving Kijimin have no catch, a no catch desire for acceptance and love. They often exhibit a creepy synthetic form to test the resolve of whom they choose. The abstract geometry synthetic form can fit in the spaces of infinitesimally small size. So I get uh, one reroll here. So I am going to choose the micro golem. I didn't like that one uh you can uh i'll cho uh, choose the one that's currently selected so i'm going to go ahead and it'll re-roll the one that's currently selected so i'll go ahead and re-roll this one and here we go um yellow loving leonin mount um yellow aspect gem and control the air and are able to reduce the density of connected uh, uh, of connected objects uh, they can allow you to fly for a short time or dash along the ground loving gem and have a no catch desire for acceptance and love got that one again um they often exhibit a creepy synthetic form or test the resolve of whom, whom they choose. The Leonin uh, natural form appears to be lion-like. Uh, this Kijimin is particularly trusting of others, large enough to be mountable. So we see here that uh, this loving, uh, uh, loving um, trait here came from one of our um, previous selections during character creation. So uh, it typically uh, uh, shows often an exhibit a synthetic form, but occasionally you can generate a natural form. And there's a, um, a whole uh, percent chance that that can occur built into the engine. So I'm just going to go ahead and confirm this. And here we are uh, into the main game. Uh, this has uh, not been developed really. We're not, uh, haven't really worked on this because I've been working on the character creation. But I have uh, done some improvements to the uh, way resources are handled. So uh, instead of having, uh, I have occasional, very, very rare uh, frame rate dips below 60. But it can, um, or typically, hovers around 600-ish um, frames per second, which is good, and about 2,000 when I stop moving. I've added a, a time of day, um, rather, the time of day indicator has been there for a while. I've added a calendar, so it shows the, the day of the week, the day of the month, the month, and the time in universe, so this is uh, showing the time of day all night and then we continue onward and it'll show the time of day full bright and which are the in universe uh, conventions for the clock it's a 12 hour clock uh, for a couple reasons uh, one uh, the in universe they use a uh, 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 dodecimal uh, number system but it's just so it can match a, an earth clock uh, so that it's easier to understand. Um, but yeah, uh, I've done a lot of work on the uh, pathfinding, the AI pathfinding algorithm, uh, just so it isn't uh, causing constant frame rate dips. Before, they were all checking uh, in the same frame uh, whether they had met their objective or not. Um, it now no longer does that. Uh, it, it's all offset. Each boat has their own um, a prime number <laughs> that they're uh, uh, choosing uh, what frame uh, to check. So uh, those 
prime numbers don't really uh, clash with each other. So I get very, very rarely some of those uh, on um, frames that are multiples of like three or four of those prime numbers, the uh, you'll get a frame rate dip, but it's very, very rare. And um, since the player, this since only the ships are checking when the player moves and the player moves when an event isn't occurring. Um, that means that uh, du during the period of time where the player is actually engaging with events, the game's running at like 2,000 frames per second. So um, uh, like 90% of the gameplay will be at, uh, will, shouldn't experience any frame rate dips. Um, but yeah, uh, that's the whole game as it is now. Uh, I am going to be building it. Uh, again, we're going to get updates every one or two weeks on this game. Again, the title is Kijimin uh, Windborn Kin. Uh, if the title of this video wasn't any indicator of that. Well, yeah. Um, thank you for watching this devlog. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, thanks. Bye.